It's Sunday, May 17th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And breaking news today, one of the Snowbirds aerial demonstration team members' jets has gone down on a pre-positioning flight from Kamloops to Comox in what appears to be a successful ejection by the pilot during a formation takeoff on this pre-positioning flight. What appears to me, we've got video of the accident. We're gonna go in the studio and review the video and then we'll walk through the Snowbird's jet aircraft and show you around a little bit. What it appears to me at this time to be some sort of an engine problem, engine failure or compressor stall on takeoff. The number two aircraft had departed the formation and began to sort out his problem. It appears that he subsequently got into a stall and spin and a very late ejection just before the aircraft crashed into the front yard of a house. So let's go inside the studio and see what we can learn. As this story develops this afternoon, we've now learned that one crew member has sustained fatal injuries and the second crew member has sustained serious injuries. Now let's roll the eyewitness video from Black Press Media of the single-engine powered CL-41 Tudor aircraft, J-85 powered. Listen carefully for the pop from the engine from the number two aircraft as it flies past the camera. Jets hanging out. What? No way. You see that plane just come out of the sky? Now let's review the videotape again and see just how quick this situation develops. Again, we're looking at the number two aircraft in the formation. You'll hear the pop of the engine as the aircraft flies by the camera. Instinctively, the pilot immediately begins to exchange airspeed for altitude, climbing away from the formation, but the airspeed decays to the point where the aircraft stalls right about in there. The aircraft gets an entire single turn of a spin in before the crew members eject late into the envelope right at the edge the outer edge of the ejection envelope. I don't even see the parachutes if they even get a single swing of their parachutes before both crew members and the aircraft hit the ground. So we'll talk more about what I mean about out of the envelope ejection, ejection details in a minute here. But first, some background on the Snowbirds. I've been watching and enjoying the Snowbirds aerobatic jet demonstration team for years and years, myself primarily watching them up at the Reno National Championship Air Races as they perform throughout North America for many years. The Snowbirds fly the CL-41 Tudor aircraft. It looks a lot like the T-37, the Cessna T-37 jet, but it's completely different. It's de designed and built by Canadair, was built, designed and built in the 1960s. These aircraft were used as primary trainers in the Canadian Air Force all the way up through until the year 2000. The Snowbirds, of course, still use them for their jet gem demonstration team. The jet demonstration team consists of 11 aircraft, usually nine aircraft in a formation with two spares. And that's what makes the Snowbirds jet dem demonstration team so unique and a great show to watch is it's by far the largest jet demonstration team, the largest number of aircraft in formation that you'll ever see on the air show circuit. The Tudor has a single engine. The J-85 engine powers the Tudor aircraft. Though it has two inlets, it looks like a twin engine, but it's not. It's a single engine aircraft. The J-85 is General Electric, very common jet engine used in the T-38s. Of course, in the T-38s, the J-85 is outfitted with afterburners. In the Tudor jet, it does not have afterburners. The J-85 was also used in the T-37 Dragonfly version of the T-37, but not the stock version of the T-37. By the way, the T-37 was a twin-engine aircraft. The Snowbirds Tudor aircraft are e equipped with ejection seats. The aircraft is a side-by-side -side trainer jet like the T-37. 
originally designed to teach primary training and specifically spin training to air to pilots because at the time spin training was considered a very important part of training by the way the snowbirds still do formation landings the ejection seats in the Tudor aircraft are not zero zero ejection seats in other words they will not work just sitting stationary on the ground you'll not get a completely safe parachute landing from a zero zero condition instead the ejection seat envelope for the Tudor aircraft is about 60 knots of airspeed up to 305 knots of airspeed and the seat requires a certain minimum altitude of at least 60 feet as well now in this late ejection sequence the aircraft had already gotten one full rotation of a spin and was headed at downhill at a high rate of speed so that cuts into your ejection envelope being able to safely get a swing out of the chute as they say once you eject from the aircraft the ejection seats have a stabilization drogue device attached to them so that once the seats eject first off the pilot has to manually reach down grab the handles and pull them up to initiate the ejection sequence the seats leave the rails of the aircraft first the canopy blows then the ejection seats go and then the drogue deploys straightening out the seat and then the seat man separator deploys it's basically a webbed seat belt between you and the seat and it pops you out of the seat at the same time that should automatically deploy your parachute you don't need to manually reach over and deploy your parachute it's connected to the seat belt system in such a way that it will automatically deploy the parachute once the seat man separation sequence begins and then hopefully your parachute blossoms and you if at a low ejection you might get one what they call one swing in the chute before you hit the ground this was a very low ejection sequence and may very well have appeared to be too low These Tudor aircraft are also equipped with a stall warning system. It's got a typical Cessna-style AOA switch on the leading edge of the aircraft, and that's coupled to a stick shaker, which shakes the stick, giving the pilot the, the feedback that he needs to realize that the aircraft is beginning to stall. In a fully uh, configured landing configuration, the Tudor aircraft will stall as low as 65 to 70 knots. Now, these guys were in the takeoff, configuration they normally take off with half flaps i can't tell from the video if he already retracted his flaps or not but nevertheless you can see where as he was climbing away from the lead aircraft his airspeed was decaying rapidly as i can only assume his engine was failing on him and he stalled the aircraft pretty quickly the cl-41 is also equipped with an air start system on it on the throttle of the aircraft is a or a couple of switches one is the speed brake and the other one well another one's a microphone and then there is the air start switch so you can mash the air start switch in an attempt to relight your engine in the event of an engine failure and that should give you continuous ignition and fuel to try to restart the engine if you have enough forward airspeed as well to keep the windmilling rpm up to initiate an air start but that's typically uh, something that you consider doing at altitude you it'll be interesting to see what they normally brief for a minimum altitude to consider even begin considering a emergency air start of the engine when you're this close to the ground your normal takeoff emergency briefing consists of a minimum altitude at which you will just consider ejecting from the aircraft before even attempting to fiddle around with an air start the flight controls on the Tudor aircraft are strictly manual. There's no hydraulic assist or fly-by-wire. It's just push rods, cables, and pulleys. Some other things that accident investigators are going to be looking at is they, the Snowbirds had another, I believe it was an engine failure-related crash last October. I think it was in Atlanta here in the States. And they were subsequently having to retrain a couple of crew members or get some new crew members up to speed quickly for this air show season. By the way, all these memorial flyby flights or incentive flyby flights that you're seeing for medical facilities, these all come out of, med of uh, military training budgets. These pilots are constantly training. They have a training budget established, and the flybys that you're seeing through for the hospitals throughout the world 
come out of already existing training budgets. They're not spending extra money to do flybys for hospitals or, or, or incentive flights that comes out of an already established training budget. So those are some of the facts that we know at this time regarding this snow, this tragic snowbird accident. I just hope and pray that the team gets it back together and continues to perform and thrill audiences throughout North America with their just it's it's one of the most beautiful displays of formation flying that you can see when you eyewitness watch the Snowbird aerial demonstration team there's some great links to some great videos i'll post them down below we'll see you here thanks again for your support